Okay, so today I want to show you YouTube automation that I've made with N8N. And this pretty much finds all the best videos within any given niche. It's a very simple, very effective, very powerful automation that I think a lot of people, not even people within automation, right? I'm talking about content creators, people on Instagram, people on TikTok, people on YouTube, they could utilize the hell out of this. And I'm sure even if you wanted to sell this to people, you actually could. All right, so let's get into how to make this, the fun part. So first thing you want to do is add a trigger. So we're just going to click this little plus, uh, click add another trigger right here. And then we want to click on add chat message or on chat message. Sorry. We want to add that in. What you'll be left with is this node right here. Okay. So if we look in here, this just sends whatever we input into the chat right here over to the next node. Then we want to start um, getting the videos. So we'll open up this again. We'll search for YouTube see youtube here now the one that we want is right here get many videos so click on that and make that as well and what you'll be left with now is this node right here so all of these will already be set up you will have to connect to the youtube api so what i suggest you do with this is look in the documentation because the documentation goes through it very clearly and you just go through the step one through ten um, then we want to return all so you can set this to just return, let's say like 20 results or 50 results, but YouTube data API does give you 10,000 requests a day. And for my case, 10,000 a day, that's plenty. Now publish after, this is extremely important. This JSON here, I'll be leaving in the description below, but this here is only going to get videos which have been posted in the last seven days because I don't want videos from three years ago or five years ago or even six months ago. I need all the latest information at my fingertips. I only want to see what's performing well now, not like that performed well from six months ago. The query, okay, so if we look at the chat input right here, we can see this JSON, move that over, drag it over here, and you'll be left with that. If it's all good, you'll have result and your query right here, the, the text that you sent before, which is AI automations. Now the region code, this is also very important. So if you're only wanting videos from, let's say, America or Australia or Indonesia, right? Set the, set the region code here to whatever country that you want. In my case, the US, because generally, you know, it's uh, very similar to Australia as well. We all speak English as well. So that's, you know, kind of an important thing for me. Uh, then we have the options. Now the order you can set as date or relevance. Now we don't want to set as date because we've already set a publish after date here. So this becomes, you know, it's not really that useful for us anymore. So the one that I would set is just relevance because everything is relevant to what, you know, we are actually asking of it. Safe search is set as moderate. That's absolutely fine. All right, so we can see here that we have the output has 546 items. We can see the title here. We can see the description. But now we can see the channel IDs, the video IDs, and these are, these are the things that are going to allow us to scrape the actual data from these videos themselves. So we'll go to the next node. And the next node here is an HTTP request. So we want to come over here. We want to click on call HTTP request, click on that. And then you'll be left with this right here. So during your setup before when you're setting up the youtube api okay and you're getting all your credentials and so on and so forth um what you want to do is actually generate a google api key as well so the key is actually going to be used in this node so we want to put this url right in here as well and this is going for getting all the uh getting all the videos from youtube um authentication none send query parameters and the key right here is your API key. Okay, so simply just paste it in here. Then we want to put part, okay, because we want content details, we want snippet and statistics. So that's going to get all the, the video views, uh, how many likes it got, how many comments it got, so on and so forth. And then we have the video ID. The video ID here is just this right here. If we, if we see right here on the left, we have a video ID. So now we're actually getting the statistics and all those, uh, sorry, all the views and likes for this particular video. So now after that, we're left with this, 
Now, it does still look quite similar, but there's a few differences. So we can see the title still, description, channel ID, but if we scroll down, now we're getting things like tags, uh, we can see the category ID as well, uh, default language, okay? But if we come down a bit more, this is exactly what we wanna see, the statistics. So we can see the view count that it got, how many likes it got, how many comments it got. So this is very important for us to move on. So now we wanna make a function note. So just go over here and type in code, all right? And you'll see this node right here, click on that and you'll be left with this right here. Right, this is where all the magic happens. So from all of this data, so if we have a look here, we got 546 items. There's just too many things here. I don't wanna go through all of these videos and look, majority of them, 95% of them are gonna be poor, okay? They're not gonna be even worth looking into. We only wanna look at the videos that are performing really, really well. This whole code here, essentially what it's doing is taking the views. So if we scroll down, let me just find, okay. So we can see the view count, the like count, favorite count, comment count. What this is doing is actually taking those. So the likes divided by views times 100, all right? So now the output generates this series of numbers here. So this is the likes to view ratio, meaning let's say someone had a video that had 100,000 views, but it only got like a thousand likes. Well, in terms of likes to view ratio, that's really bad. But if let's say a video had 100,000 views and it got, uh, it got 10,000 likes, well, the like to view ratio is very good. So this is telling us that the community, their subscribers, their viewers are liking this content, meaning that this is probably content that's worth looking into. It's doing really, really well. Now, the same thing for the comments. It's doing a comments divided by views times 100. And then we get the comment ratio here as well, a series of numbers. All right, I'll also be pasting this in the description. So just check it out below. I won't you know, tell you to type all this out one by one, but basically now we're left with this output. So from this whole scrambled bloody mess right over here, we're left with now a clean, easy to read uh, chunk of data. So we can see the title, we can see the YouTube URL, the like ratio and the comment ratio. So once that is done, we wanna add an if node, all right? So just simply come up here, type an if, click on this one right here, move it over, all right? So I wanna actually put this one and open this up. Now, I've already done the calculations, so you can copy this as it is, but if we look over here, I've taken the like ratio, and if the like ratio is greater than five, it'll be passed through. But it also has to be a comment ratio greater than 0.3. It also has to have views which are greater than 1,000 because sometimes you have videos that, uh, let's say they only have uh, 10 views, but they like their own video. So in terms of the view to like ratio, that's a 10%, but they like their own videos. So we don't want that, right? So what this does is kind of, um, gets rid of all those uh, people liking their own videos, even though they have barely any views. And this sets at a minimum of, a minimum of 1,000, okay? But you can adjust these to your liking as well. Let, let's say you wanted like um, a minimum of 5,000 videos, set it up, okay? Depending on your niche, you might wanna do 500,000 uh, views as well, set it up. Um, in my case as well, so titles that have uh, the word crypto, I don't want, because a lot of videos, especially AI automation, AI agents, there seems to be a lot of this, you know, making these crypto AI agents and bots and everything like that. I don't really have much interest for it. All right, so what this is doing now is just filtering out all the videos which performed poorly and returning only the videos which did well. So we see here on the right, uh, we have a lack like to view ratio of eight, comment to view ratio of seven, uh, 0 0.7, and all the way down, and we see them all here. So that's what we're left with now. The removed duplicates, whoa, it's pouring down rain now, terrific. <laughs> so this one right here, just simply type in remove, click on remove duplicates, and then open it up. 
And basically all you have to do is just remove items repeated within the current input and you're good to go. So next one here is just filter languages. So we just simply go over here, click on advanced AI and basic LLM chain. All right. And that'll make these things up here. So we'll get rid of that. Now, when you come over here, if you look at this, we have the output from the remove duplicates node and we want to get the titles. Simply put the title in here of what it's going to receive as the output from the remove duplicates node. Click on the require specific output format because we're going to use a parser as well. And for the system message, it's very simple. Your job is to verify if the titles in English or not. Respond with one word answers. Yes for titles in English and no for titles not in English. So we add that in there. I'll put that in the description as well. Come back, make sure you've connected over your ChatGPT or whatever LLM that you use. I just use 4o Mini. It's cheap, costs like barely anything. But very important is the parser. So once you click on this right here, it gives you an option to output pass to add an output parser. So just click on that. And we can put in the JSON here, which is just an answer to return an answer and whether that is yes or no. So what that's gonna do is provide an answer, which we can then filter out again, because if the title is not in English, it will say no, right? Now, if it's no, it'll be going down false, which is exactly where we want it to go. But if it's true that it is in English, then we wanna pass it through to the next node. So we can see here, we look on the, on the left, we can see this one here, no, so it got rejected. This one here, no, no, all rejected. I don't have to see it, I don't have to deal with it. All right, so now let's set up the air table so we can get all the data and actually see it. So simply just click on this, click on air table. We wanna click air table right here and we wanna click on, where is it? Create a record, this one right here, okay? So once you have that, you'll see this right here. So same thing here, we just wanna connect our credentials over to Airtable. Click on docs if you do get a bit confused, but they do have a, um, a guide on how to get it set up. It's very, very simple. Go through that, add your credentials in here, get that set up. Now you're just gonna get the resource, it's a record, the operation is create, the base, okay? So this is your base of, um, which has tables within it. Once you've created on your Airtable, click that right here. Then which table is it? And then you click that right here. Now the full of values, I've actually sent it from the remove duplicates because here are the values right here that we want to send. So all you're doing here, see this, this title JSON right here? You just take that, put it right over here and there it is. Simple as that, all right? So we're going to do that for all four of these. The title, the YouTube URL, the like ratio and the comment ratio. So ensure that once you're doing this as well, that you've already set up all of these columns in your Airtable as well. So we can see here that I have title set up, I have the view score set up, I have the comment score set up and the URL as well. So once you go here, these fields will actually be available with an N8N. And then all you have to do is just map each item to each column. Save that, go up here, Click on save and now you're good to go and run your YouTube automation. But if you do come into any issues, double check all your credentials. Okay, so look through the YouTube API, make sure that you've got the right settings set up in there. Um, your air table as well, make sure you've got the right uh, scope set up. Same thing for YouTube. So that's how you set up this powerful YouTube automation. I hope you enjoy the video. If my explaining was a little bit bad, I apologize, my first YouTube video. <laughs> but uh, it's a very simple, very effective, very powerful automation that I think a lot of people, not even people within automation, right? I'm talking about content creators, people on Instagram, people on TikTok, people on YouTube, they could utilize the hell out of this. And I'm sure even if you wanted to sell this to people, you actually could. If you do need a hand with anything, I'll be here. Just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Enjoy.